Hey, welcome everybody. My name is Dylan Friedhoff. I'm a solution engineer at Talon Software. We're here to talk about data stewardship, part three, data merging. It's part three in a three-part series. Data merging is about finding duplicate records that aren't exact matches, but close enough where we can forward them to the human eyes to have a look at and decide whether these two records should actually become one in the final data system. The first step in data stewardship merging is similar to resolution and arbitration. We go into the Data Stewardship Council, go into My Campaigns, add a campaign, select Type of Merging, give it a name, Merge Marketing Sources. All right, simple uh, campaign owners, the administrator, we need just add uh, admin as a role. Data model, using the same data model that we've been using for all use cases. Once again, we can have a validation step. We're going to leave that out and add the role of stewards. Now we have our merge marketing sources campaign created. So the next step in populating this campaign is to query the data, all the multiple data sources and provide any kind of matching and merging into the data stewardship merging process. To illustrate this, I've switched over to the Talent Studio. I have two data sources, one we're going to call ERP and another one point of sale system. The merging requires that there be a column of data that specifies which system it comes through. So for both of these, I've added one extra column called source and hard-coded the name of the data system into that. So now we have to use a component called the TUnite that will allow us to bring both of these into one union data stream. Then we need to specify the schema. The easiest way is just to come into the schema and hit the double right arrows to bring all of them from the left to right. So now we have the schema for the TUnite and we're going to use a commercial component of Talon called TMatch Group. TMatch Group is going to allow us to specify what columns that we want to match and merge on. <clears throat> so I want an exact match on the last name For the first name, I'm going to use a function, Jero Winkler. I'm going to add blocking. Blocking is the ability to separate out and say, you know what, if these two individuals are not in the same state and they're not in the same city, there is no way that they can match. Hit the chart button. This will go <clears throat> query the data, bring it back for preview so we can get a good idea of what we're looking at here. So based on our matching threshold, we have the groups and we're hiding all the groups of one, which means the engine's pretty mature, they're unique. And it brings back under group size the number of rows that seem to be a, a good match. Here we have two and here we have three, two, three. Um, the master tells which one seems the most logical and moves forward with that. The score, because the, it's the master, is one. If it's not, you get a score based on the Jero Winkler function that we used. If you use an exact matching functions, usually it's either one or zero based if they match or not. And then you get a group quality, meaning how confident the algorithm is that uh, everything matches. So now that we've set up the T-match group, I want to point out a very important setting under advanced settings, the multiple output. Check it so that you have separate outputs. What this does is it creates three distinct outputs on the T-match group. Each one will be based on the confidence match of the component and the algorithm. So uniques are all rows that have a group size of one, meaning it's been deemed as unique. So for the group size greater than one, matches are all the rows that are greater than the confident match threshold for the separate output of 0.9.
Lastly, suspects are the rest of the rows that the algorithm matched but are, do not have the score above the confidence match threshold. It is these suspect records that we want to go on to the Data Stewardship Council. But before we can do that, we're going to have to map the columns from the team match group to the columns in the stewardship output. So you can see that in the fields that we have in our schema right now, we have all the data fields that we've been working with. But we also have a few extra fields that are given to us by the team match group. But before we can map these columns, we need to add in our T data stewardship task output. We need to set the properties to go to the stewardship server, username and password to log in. And the final step is to find that campaign that we created in the previous step. And that's uh, merge marketing success. So now there's a few more settings we can do. I like to assign the individual that's going to be working on these, so I'm going to choose the administrator. And the final step is to create an output from our T-map to the T-Data Stewardship task output. You can give it whatever name you want. Usually out one is the default. But very important step, do you want to get the schema of the target component? And you need to say yes to this. If you say no, then you'll have to sync it later. So if we go into the T-Map, you can see that most of our columns match, which means we can use an auto map to bring them over immediately. The next one is the group ID. The group ID is fairly simple. You just go from uh, one GID to the other. Source, very simple also. Size, we don't need. The master, you can bring it over, but what that does is it automatically defaults to a particular master, and I don't want that. I want the data steward to sh choose which of the merge lines wants to be the master, so I'll just put false there. And lastly is the score. The score gives uh, the stewardship engine the confidence of how well these have all matched. So when we execute this, the T match group will give us the suspect rows that are left. And once we run this through, you can see that there's 52 rows that meet that criteria. So when we go back to the Talent Data Stewardship Council, you can see that now there are 23 tasks assigned to the merge marketing sources. When we drill down into that, you can see here are all the groups of uh, rows that job that we created has outputted. There's only 23 rows because the 52 rows have been grouped. So if we open up group 14, you can see that there are three items that the merging algorithm decided should go together. Now the first thing I notice is Gerald and Gloria. Now Jerry and Gerald might be the same but I know Gloria isn't so uh, the first option I have is under the, the rows is to split the task. And now you can see item 24 has just the one row for Gloria and uh, that's good. I'll just uh, mark that as finished and let Gloria go in back into the system. And then I have to decide is the golden record going to be Gerald or Jerry? Maybe I want Jerry. Just by clicking this up arrow you can see that it changes it. Once I have all the information up here that I want I just lock that. You can see that 8% of my assigned tasks have been finished. When I want to post this all I have to do is hit the validate choices and now those rows have gone into the resolved section of the data stewardship and are ready to be read back by another job into the final database. For more information about reading out of the data stewardship into a final database, see parts one and two of the series. I hope that this three-part series has helped you understand the end-to-end -end capability of the talent data stewardship. Thank you.